Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a chatty get ready with me. I feel like it's been a long time since I've just sat down, gotten ready, and just kind of ranted, unloaded <laughs> about just random stuff. I know people really do like these longer videos. I personally love get ready with me's because when I'm getting ready like early in the morning for work, I love putting one on and then just doing my makeup along with them. That being said, this is going to be a longer type video, just me kind of talking about whatever pops into my head. So before we jump to the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these longer chatty get ready with me's. And if you'd like to and you haven't already, I hope you would consider subscribing and hitting that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video every single Monday through Friday. Okay, so let me just go ahead and talk through what I'm going to be putting on for my base so that I don't have to stop every two seconds to show you what products I'm going to be using. For primer, I'm going to go in with the primer that I'm currently panning. This is my Burberry Nude Radiance Fresh Glow Luminous Dewy Fluid Base. I might not have all those words in the title. Who knows? I could have made that up. For foundation, I'm really loving the Catrice foundation, so I've been using this a lot, but I do want to experiment more of mixing this in with other foundations. So I'm going to mix it today with my CYO Life Proof just to see if that works. In the Catrice, I have shade 030 Sand Beige, and in the Catrice, so not in, blah. And in the CYO, I'm shade 104. For concealer, I'll be going in with a, another project. Blah, blah. Can I talk today? For concealer, I'm going to be going in with another product that I'm panning. This is my Kylie Concealer, and this is in the shade Bone. For loose powder under my eyes, again, a product that I'm panning. I'm actually almost done with this already, which is pretty good. This is my Natasha Denona Invisible HD Face Powder in number 01. And then for the rest of my face, I'm just going to powder it using the powders from one of my Hourglass palettes. I'm not sure which one yet. I'm still comparing them side by side. I really do want to film the comparison video this weekend so hopefully it'll be up within a week or two so i feel like we should just jump into like the heavier subjects first right i've been stressed stressed as all hell and the thing is like i don't even like i know why but like they're really things i don't have to be stressed about and it's just making my anxiety worse and i feel like throughout like a regular year for me I've got ups and I've got downs and for the past few like weeks I felt like I was in a good place where I was handling my anxiety and I was handling everything pretty well and then recently it's just kind of been like one thing after another after another after another and I mean I'm still doing good in the broader sense of things at, at the end of the day I think it's just I'm struggling a bit and I know I eventually always make it out of these like little ruts it's not even really a rut it's just like an inconvenience. It's, I feel like it's taking me a little bit longer to get out of it than I normally take. So let's see, the first thing that's kind of stressing me out is uh, apartment hunting. My boyfriend and I have been looking for apartments for a long time and for the most part it's really discouraging because we live not too far from New York City. Oh, don't drop it. We live not too far from New York City. I work right outside the city so it's I mean it's difficult finding affordable places to begin with. Um, the whole process because I'm we can't really afford to like hire a realtor to help us out or anything so it's just like all on us we have to do all the research we have to find the places we got to go to the appointments and I felt like for the longest time it was just like disappointment after disappointment um but then we finally found this one place it's literally like less than 10 minutes from where I work it's got like this affordable program where um, it's definitely a lot more affordable than the rest of the units in the building because it's like a luxury apartment building but the way that the laws in that part of the city work is that you have to save 10% of the units in that building for people to apply for affordable housing and so we had to enter a lottery for that and we entered the lottery and I was like this is a long shot who knows I don't even know if that's gonna go through um, we waited a few weeks and then we found out our number was pulled and we had an appointment to apply for the apartment, which was both terrifying and exciting and honestly couldn't believe that we actually got picked. I mean, it doesn't, that doesn't guarantee you an apartment. It just let you apply. Like you had to win a lottery to apply. Oh, the joys of housing. <laughs> so anyway, we were told a week before about our appointment date. So they sent, I don't know why they refused to do email for this. They sent me a letter in the mail and they said, okay, so on October 9th, 
you have an appointment, you have to come in to apply, you need to bring all of this paperwork. And it was like, a lot like six months uh it was like applying for a mortgage like i was talking to my dad about it he's like that's the kind of stuff you have to do when you apply for like a house mortgage not just for like an apartment we're not buying like we're just renting <laughs> let me just actually do my makeup i'm getting into this so i mixed uh the catrice and the cyo eh, i think it might be a little dark i probably could have put more of the catrice in there So anyway, essentially they told us we had a week to get all this information together. We both had to take a day off of work so that we could go into this appointment because it was at one o'clock on like a Tuesday. And so we're running around, we're doing all this work. I have to like request my birth certificate. I have to get it shipped to me. We have to get all this tax stuff from last year printed. And like, I'm pretty good. Like I'm not complaining about what we had to do. I'm just complaining a little bit that they, they gave us like less than a week to get it all together. And I think part of it is because they really just want to weed people out. Like if you don't jump through all the hoops that they want you to jump through, then it's just easier to eliminate you and like move on to the next person. So I was like terrified doing everything that we had to and I really wanted to just not give them a reason to like turn down our application. So we have everything together. The day of the appointment finally arrives and all we have to do is the morning of get a money order for the $75 application fee that they told us to get and I've never gotten a money order before like I've always had a bank I've never I didn't even know like how it worked to me the whole thing was a little kind of weird um, so my boyfriend and I go to CVS where they do money orders and this is about like an hour before we have to catch the train because it's downtown we're not gonna find parking there so we have to take the train to the appointment and so we get to the CVS, they make us wait for like 10 minutes, and then they're like, oh, our machine's broken, we can't do it. <laughs> and we're like, okay, so where can we go? Because we have an hour and we, we need the money order now. <sighs> so we go to the post office, it's like a mile away, and oh, what is it about? Like, I don't want to be ugh, rude. I hate this post office because you can never get anything done. I don't know if the systems are actually really messed up and nothing actually works. I just think the woman that works there is incredibly rude and if one little thing in the system doesn't work she'll just hide in the back and yell at people and won't do anything. Like legitimately we walked into the post office and she's in the back room and she's I hear music and I hear her talking and we're trying to get the money order so we she I think she heard us walk in because a few minutes after we were standing there she goes oh the machine's not working I'm not gonna come out okay so I heard that because I was listening but my boyfriend had his headphones in and so he didn't hear her so he goes to like knock on the glass for like the office and she gets even angry and she goes I said I'm not coming out there the machine doesn't work what do you expect him to do look at a machine that's not working and I'm like, excuse me? How the how the hell does she get to pull this kind of shit and still have a job? Like, I can't I couldn't do that when I worked in retail. I would immediately be fired. Why does she get to do that? Why does she get to treat people, you know, polite people walking in trying to get something done that shitty? <laughs> oh, oof. So after that, uh, she's like, you can go somewhere else to get it done. It's not working here. So we're two strikes out trying to get a money order. We have a train to catch and I'm pissed now because of the way that she treated us. And she wouldn't, she actually never even came out of the office to look at us. She was screaming that from the back door. I had to blend for a bit. I was getting a bit uh, heated about that. Um, this combination of the foundation looks nice, like on the skin, like it looks really smooth and it does cover, but the shade is oxidizing, which is weird because the shade looks really off and I've used both of these separately and they look fine but this shade like I had to bring it down here because there was a clear demarcation between like my neck and my chest but we'll see how that wears so anyway we're two strikes out trying to get a money order before we have to go to this appointment I'm freaking out um so I get we get into the car I'm freaking out and uh I start calling every CVS in the area trying to find like where can we get a money order because it's the only part of our application that we don't have. So I'm sitting in the car freaking out calling all the CVS's. I finally find one that says oh our money, mach our money order machine is working you can come in. 
Oh, that shade is off. This shade is normally not this bright on me. Yeah, this is dark. So we finally find, um, find a CVS. We speed over. We get the money order. Thank God it worked. And then we run back to my house. We drop the car off. And then we Uber to the train station to catch the train. Thankfully, everything worked out. We got on the trains. The trains... Like, there was a, a track closure, so they had to, like, redirect all the trains, and then there was a delay in the train. So, of course, then I'm freaking out that we're going to be late to the appointment. <laughs> so, first the money order, then the train. After we actually finally get there, it's a little bit of a walk from the train station to the apartment. So, we finally get there. Thank God we were 15 minutes early, like which is good because we were also in the waiting room and there was a man that like missed his appointment and you could tell by the way like the appointment like because there are back-to-back appointments the whole day i think they had drawn the lottery of a bunch of applicants there's 80 apartments by the way i don't know how many they pulled but basically like i said you don't want to give them a reason to disqualify your application because there's there was over a thousand people that entered the lottery for this for 80 apartments So we're finally there. Our appointment's here. We go through all the paperwork. It's a lot of signing things. It's a lot of looking things over. We hand everything over. I already made copies. I had all of our information. I had a binder. We were good. The guy was really impressed, the guy doing our appointment. He's like, I think you have one of the first full applications we've seen. Normally people are missing one or two things. You guys have everything. And I'm like, fantastic. This is great. So he goes to make copies of like our birth certificates and our passports and everything. And then he comes back and he's like, okay, so we're all done. I just need your money order. And I'm like, here you go. We got it. This is great. And he goes, okay, so it should be $150. And we were like, we were told on the application, it's 75 for the application. He goes, yeah, I'm sorry. They didn't make it clear on the application. It's not 75 per application. It's 75 per person. And there were two people on the application. So after everything we went through, the money order wasn't enough. We start, they're like, if you can get us the money order by the end of the day, your application is still done. And we're like, whoa, okay. It is now uh, two o'clock. We're downtown. We are now running around trying to find another CVS, but also we need to find an ATM because you can't, you can only do a money order with cash. So we had to take out $75 in cash and get a money order by four o'clock. <laughs> and it was kind of a part of town that we really haven't been to that often. Like I take the train past it all the time, but I'm not walking around the neighborhood. <laughs> so we're, I'm freaking out again after everything that we've just been through. And I'm using the two face powders from the Unlocked palette from Hourglass, just a set. So we're walking around freaking out. We finally find out that in the mall across the street, so this is like half an hour, 45 minutes later, we were walking around everywhere, couldn't find anything. We finally find a CVS that has both an ATM and a money order machine. Fantastic. We get that done. We run back. We see the guy that did our interview. We pass it off. And that's that. And that was it. Now we just have to wait. They said it could take weeks, and that so far, no one's been accepted yet. So that was something really stressful that happened, I think it was now, almost two weeks ago. And now I'm just stressed out, like, are we gonna get it? Did I, did we do all that work just to, like, throw $150 down the drain to not even get an apartment? Like, so that's, that's part one of kind of what's running through my brain now. So the... Next thing weighing on my mind has just been work. Work's been really busy, um, but this past week has just been insane. And the busyness there combined with the fact that my boss flew in. So my boss is based out of Ohio and I'm based here on the East Coast. 
right outside of New York. We really didn't know why she was flying in because normally you only fly in if it's like a year end review or something. I've only been with the company like less than six months. So it's not my six month review or my one year review. So we were kind of like, why is she coming in? And I found out when she was here that, uh, so we, I mean, I work in publishing and we've got contracts with certain um, companies and associations to do publishing for them. Due to a decision from higher ups, I'm trying to be very vague here, but due to a decision made by higher ups in the company to change some systems, we're having issues with the contract. And this contract is worth $20 million. It's a lot of money. And so me and my boss were kind of on like the lower end where we deal with the company every day. We have meetings with them every week. We help with like some customer issues, like printing, getting orders in, like small things like that. And we've been having issues with this new system since I started. And it wasn't until the company was kind of threatening like legal action, like breach of contract action, because we can't, we couldn't print the books that they wanted like on time. But it wasn't until now, this has been happening since I started, it wasn't until now that higher ups in our company were getting involved. And there was a huge meeting that they put together just about this company in my office, which is why my boss had to fly in. So real quick, I'm going to take my bronzer, blush, and highlight all from the Hourglass palette. I love this palette so much. And then for my contour, I'm just going to go back into my tried and true Smashbox palette and just take the contour shade right there. So anyway, she's really stressed coming into this, I'm sure. Like just going into a meeting that big, you know, having... It, it's stressful. And I had my like one-on-one -on -one meeting with her the day before yesterday. She flew in on Tuesday, left last night. So I had my one-on-one -on -one meeting with her and normally like I know how my boss normally acts. I've met her in person before. I had to fly out to Ohio for my training when I first started. And like 99% of the time like she's fairly bubbly. She's always down to business but friendly. She was just stressed and she was not having it. And so our meeting was a little stilted, but it was good because I was on top of all of my work and it was kind of just more of an update for her. Um, but by the end of the meeting, I was like, oh, I, I hope I'm like fine in this situation, but I'm on top of my work. There's no reason for me to be worried. This is all above me. It's above my pay grade. But still, it's not good to see your boss that stressed and worried, you know, and there's not really much you can do to help. And I know it's silly because at the end of the day, she wasn't stressed because of my work or because of, if anything, I was helping out. She told me that um, it's great that I was able to solve these problems and help out. And I've been supporting the team. And she introduced me to all the higher ups because I've been emailing and like checking things for them. And so they've never met me in person, but they all know me by email. So they introduced me. Why did I only do one half of my face with bronzer? Ooh, I am out of it. So at the end of the day, it's okay as far as I know, but it was just stressful. Also stressful having all of those higher ups in the office. Like the office was packed yesterday. Normally, at most, in my part of the office, there's like 20 people. They were overloading, like there was more than 50 people in my office. And it was just like, oh, there was just a lot of people. There was a lot of stuff. Everybody was, it's an open office too. So it's not like I have a cubicle or anything. Like I'm we're in like little, you know, in like middle school, you had like those little pods. We have pods. Uh, so you could hear everything, everyone. It was a bit overwhelming and I had a lot of work to do. And I got like a lot of it done. So I didn't feel bad about my work or what I'm doing. It was just kind of like a sensory overload thing. And I think ultimately that's why I'm feeling so bad. It's just, it's just a lot at once. Like not everything on its own would be stressful to this point but the combination of all of this happening within like two weeks is getting to me and has gotten to me and I'm still working on how to get out of it so anyway so she was here she flew out last night um I didn't even actually get to say goodbye to her because she had to run out to catch her flight so I know at the end of the day work is still fine I've actually made a big breakthrough because part of my job is actually fixing what the person who used to have my job did because he messed up a lot of stuff and I have to go back and fix it. And I actually just figured out the last thing that I really need to fix. So that's, I'm making awesome progress and everyone has said so. So I really don't need to worry about work. I think I was definitely just taking on my boss's stress too much and making it my own, which 
I shouldn't because that's not my job. I'm doing my job really well. Get it through your brain. So we went over apartment, we went over work. The whole Sephora thing happened. So if you missed uh, my why I left Sephora video, that'll be up there. I'm not going to rehash it. But that also happened within that same two week period. Yeah. So we've got the apartment, we have the Sephora thing, we've got this work thing, and then the last thing I'm gonna complain about, because I just need to get this off my chest. Normally my commute is pretty good to work. I do have to take three trains, but it's just two transit systems, so I just have to have two tickets, I have two monthly tickets. If you're from the area, you know I've gotta take NJ Transit and the path to get to work every day. If you're not from the area, NJ Transit is the, the state-run rail system, and then the PATH is the train that goes between New York and New Jersey, so it goes into Manhattan, it goes on the edge of New Jersey, Jersey City, Hoboken, uh, Journal Square, you know, that area. So at the end of the day, it's two systems run by two separate entities, and I have to take both to get to work. NJ Transit, the first one, has been having issues for months, if not years. They've been um, like delaying trains, canceling trains. They've been a lot of, there's a lot of track work that they have to do that they're never really on top of. But just recently, they're apparently uh, in a crunch time to install this new software on every train in their fleet. And they had a deadline of like December 2015 and then they got that extended to December of 2018 and they're really not done to the point where an announcement was made that they're cutting the prices of all the tickets by 10 percent because they're gonna have to cancel a lot of trains and delay a lot of trains between now and january that was put into place and just started monday and my commute has been garbage since like i've had good days and bad days on my commute but this week has just been consistent late delayed trains canceled trains and i've been to work late almost every day which is unacceptable but the thing is almost everyone in my office takes the same trains so a lot of people are just working from home until the trains can kind of figure themselves out a lot of people are just coming in late and staying later so i'm not getting in trouble for being late this is a, a wide known issue and a lot of people are dealing with it so thank god like my office is understanding of that but now the commute that I used to like, because it used to be like structured reading time for me. I used to spend an hour in the morning. I don't always have a seat on the train because it's busy, but it, was, it wasn't was always packed sardine trains, right? So there would at least be room for me to stand up and read my book. And I loved having that structured like reading time. And I haven't been getting that lately. And I think that's also part of why I'm so stressed because I'm not I don't have any outlets anymore other than YouTube and this is actually helping a lot just talking about it I need to do this more often <sighs> so since Monday the trains have been late the trains have been squished to the point where I can I can only do this with my phone I can't even really move and it's taken me I can normally do the trip to work an hour station to station so like an hour door to door the worst it was almost uh Tuesday I left an hour early that I normally do. I caught an earlier train. And I got to work at the same time that I normally would. So it took me almost two hours, a little bit over two hours, to get to work. Which is bananas. Like, I shouldn't leave an hour early and get to work at the same time. That was ridiculous. And the whole time I was squished on a train, so I wasn't even, like, reading a book. I was standing squished with a bunch of other people. And that's really stressing me out. Like, I'm really hoping, like, it's just the first week and people are getting used to the new train schedule and everything. I'm really hoping that it gets better. Because it, this it's just been, like, the whole week has been trash for the commute. Today, I'm actually, so today, I'm filming this on a Thursday. I'm working from home today. <laughs> I, I've had a stressful week and I said, you know what? Uh, my boss was here. She just flew home. She's not really going to be in the office for the morning. Um, I'm going to ask to work from home. And she was like, yeah, sure, go for it. Uh, so I'll be going into the office on Friday, and I'll be staying here and working Thursday. And I'm really hoping that less people are just taking the train on Fridays, because a lot less people go into the office on Fridays. I don't know. So, so the commute's been getting to me. And I think the 
the reason I'm being so stressed is because I'm getting like a little bit of everything from every direction. It's like the apartment and it's me and my boyfriend and it's work and it's the commute and I live in a family of extroverts. So when I come home, it's it's my grandma and my brother here with me. And they, they, they need to be around people. They need to talk. They need to do this. They need to do that. But after a day of freaking out about the apartment, of getting ready for work, going to work, getting squished in the train, spending a day surrounded by people and stress, doing the same thing on the train back home, and then coming home, all I want to do is sit by myself in a quiet room and have my dinner and just have a little bit of time to myself. And that really doesn't happen. I mean, I understand extroverts and how they like to be around people. I can't do that. I haven't had any time to myself in weeks. And I think that's gonna, I need some time to myself. Is what I'm realizing. I need to spend a day, get out of the house, go somewhere, do something. Just, I need time to recharge. Is what it is. I think that's a good idea. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to plan a day and just do something for me. Well, now that we spent 20 minutes ranting, let me throw my highlighter on. <laughs> oh, I didn't take off my baking powder. <laughs> Let's take that off. Normally, I take this off before I put my highlighter on because I don't want the powder that I'm swiping off to kind of dull the highlight. But that's a good thing. Like if you don't, if you want a more subtle highlight with a highlight that's a little bit more bam, put it on before you take off your bake and then just kind of bring your bake down a little bit. It'll subtle it. I have no idea what I want to do with my eyes. Normally, I love eyeshadow and that's what I'll spend the most time on when I get ready in the mornings. But recently, as I've been so stressed and I just want to get out that I've been doing like almost nothing for my eye makeup and just putting on like liner. So I really want to spend, what time is it? Oh, I've got plenty of time. I'm going to spend some time and do a nice eye look. Let's see. What do I want to do? So I'm going to use a palette that I've really been wanting to use more and haven't really gotten a whole lot of use out of recently, the Norvina palette. It's a beautiful palette. Love the formula, of course. But like some of the more like purpley, pinky shades I haven't been able to play with because I'm really just doing my makeup before I go to work in the morning, but since I work from home today, I think I can dig into some of the pinks and the purples and not have to worry about, uh, like, all my coworkers looking at, like, why do you got pink on your eyeshadow? <laughs> so an update. I actually just placed my order this morning with Ulta. I added, like, a big Ulta order, and I'm glad that I'm wait I waited. I actually just got, like, a 20% off coupon in the mail for being a Platinum member. Thank you, Ulta. So I got 20% off my whole order. And I got, um, I found the Wet n Wild highlighting palette that I talked about in my weekly wow last week. And I've, I got the Sultry palette, so that's coming in the mail. And I picked up the rest of the items that I need for my full face of Wet n Wild. So that's going to be coming soon. That'll probably be my next get ready with me, the full face of Wet n Wild. So let me just go ahead and take the base shade real quick. Oh, you know what? It would help if you primed first. My head, where is my head this morning? <laughs> Oh my god, Monica. I'm using my Urban Decay Primer Potion to prime. I'm gonna leave my eyebrows alone for today. I feel like I'll just throw in a, a clear brow gel. Okay, now that I'm primed, I'm gonna jump in with the shade base. Whew. I'm going to go ahead and throw in some clear brow gel on my brows just to kind of keep them in a line. Behave, brows. Behave. Okay, so I really want to use the pinks and the purples. But, ooh, I like that drama shade. <laughs> so, I'm going to go in first with the shade Love, which is kind of like a satin pink, and I'm going to use that for my transition. Ooh, ooh, that's soft. Pretty, I'm liking that, okay. Next, I really wanna go in with Soul. 
this like purpley kind of color. I don't want to bring it up as high as I brought Love, but I'm going to use that same brush and just kind of, ooh, it made my brush look so pretty. Let's look at how pretty that gradient is on the brush. Brush appreciation. Kind of keep this a lot lower. Okay, so for my lid shade, I really want to take the pink shimmer wild child right here on the inner portion of my lid and then i'm going to blend that out with this dark purple just on the outer edge this is called drama right over here and then i'm still debating about what i want to throw on my lower lash line don't know i'm feeling like I'm, i kind of want to keep it pink and purple but let's see how the lid looks and of course nyx glitter glue i mean if i were to be sponsored by anyone at this point like it would either be nyx for the glitter glue or, what else do I just talk nonstop about? Or it would be Urban Decay for their, uh, the Perversion Mascara that I love. Or the Sh uh, Shantakai. Shantakai should sponsor me because it's not should. Like, I'm obviously joking. But between their mascara and their foundation, just, just mwah. boop a doop boop putting color on the lid. boop a doop boop a doop boop 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 Ooh, that is bright. Oh, it looks really pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Throw on some liner and mascara, and we'll jump back for the lower lash line. Ooh, so I love how that looks so far. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of the shade Drama right there for my lower lash line. so nice okay now for my inner corner what do i want to go with i think i'm gonna take dreamer just kind of like this vanilla shade right here just let me get the mirror monica that might help oh that's pretty oh that's really pretty oh oh i like this okay now what lip color should I wear with this? Maybe a nude? A glossy nude. L let me go see. Ooh, I just, oh, this is such a great combination for a glossy nude. So this is a Marc Jacobs lipstick and a Marc Jacobs lip gloss. These are both minis I got on a full kit. It also comes with a lip liner. I should have used the lip liner. I don't reach for lip liners that much. The lipstick and the gloss are both in cream and sugar. Okay, so I'm still waiting for my hair to dry, but this is the final look. I'm really, really liking the Norvina palette. I know I didn't do a full video on this. I kind of felt like I missed the full time period. But if you guys want to see like a three looks, one palette or a review video, let me know down below because I could definitely still do one. And then the Sultry palette is still coming in. So let me know what you want to see with that palette as well. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to me rant for, I'm sure this is probably almost like a 40 minute video. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like these longer videos, let me know with a like, hit that thumbs up button, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye.